Kelly Heather Mason, uh, the Application Specialist here at Particle Measuring System. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about our Active Air Sampler, the Minicat Mobile. This is our Minicat Mobile. It has an antibacterial housing. So what that means is that 95% reduction of bacterial load on the housing and on the screen of our instrument. So if you're going from room to room and you're taking this instrument with you, it's less likely to have a false positive coming from room to room and cross-contaminating. You'll see the instrument is 100 liters per minute. We also have a 50 liter per minute and a 25 liter per minute unit. The 100 liter per minute is meant to take a 10 minute sample. This is for lower grade areas like a grade D or an ISO 8. The 25 liter per minute unit is for continuous monitoring. I've seen customers use the instrument for up to two hours and they simply change out their auger plate every two hours for a continuous amount of time of the fill. So we're gonna to talk today more about setting up recipes and locations and users for the instrument and see some other reports. So if the instrument has an issue and there's an alarm, you'll be able to see any of that on the report. So let's go into the software. Thank you very much. So you can see the startup screen of the Minicat Mobile has a calibration pop-up. This just lets you know that your instrument, when the last time your instrument was calibrated. So a user would see this and have to hit the check mark to acknowledge that the instrument is within calibration. So now you're gonna see the basic startup screen of the Minicat Mobile. You can simply hit the start button to take a sample. But if you wanna go into detail and set up a recipe, set up locations, set up different features and have a custom sampling, then I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can see your volume. Right now my volume, I have it as a thousand liters. I can change that to make it into time. Either one, um, I can change that time to one minute, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I can also change that volume to whatever amount I'd like to sample. We have a start delay. The start delay is a really good feature. It allows the operator to get away from the instrument and then the sampling starts. It's like a remote start on the instrument. So I typically set my start delay to be at least 10 seconds. Next we have intervals. So if you wanted to take samples for an eight hour period and have a one minute sample every 10 minutes, you could set that up by doing the intervals. This way you get the entire coverage, but only have your active air sampling happening enough that your auger plate is not desiccating. So you can set up as many intervals as you would like. Uh, we could do three intervals that will happen in this thousand liters. And next you have pauses. So if you wanna sample for 10 minutes and then stop it, you can set that information in there too. You can pause that if something happens and you need to stop your sampling and go back to it, that is perfect for that application. And then you have your compressed gas mode. So if you wanted to test compressed gas, you would simply attach the compressed gas kit, make sure that button is selected, and it's a very simple process. This little button right here is a tools button. It'll let you go to different menus. Uh, you can set up recipes, locations, you can view the data from sampling, you can create different users, and then additional setup. So with the recipe, you can create up to 400 locations and 50 recipes that are associated with those locations. So let's create a recipe. I have a lot of them already in here, but I'm gonna create a new one by pushing on the plus sign. I have it as a volume as 1000 liters, but I wanna change that. I would like to make that 100 liters. I'm gonna just do a quick sample. I'm gonna put a start delay in of 10 seconds, and I'm gonna leave my interval, I'm gonna leave my pauses, and I'm gonna call this something. I'm gonna make up a name for that. So what I'm gonna call it is COVID test.
and I'm saving that. So next I need to associate a location with that recipe. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna create a location. The area of my location, I'm going to create a new one. So I'm gonna hit the plus button and I'm gonna call this one Boulder And then it gives you a choice of doing a location name. So if you were doing a building and you could do a specific room in that building. So I'm gonna call this the lunch room because that's where everyone has the most fun in Boulder. And then I'm gonna assign a recipe. I'm gonna assign the recipe I just made. And that recipe should be down in this drop down box. And that was the COVID test and I'm gonna save that. I go back home and I want to use that recipe. I'm gonna go up here and look for that recipe that I just created in the drop-down box. And there that is. So then I can start my sampling. I'm just gonna hit that green button and sample will start. You'll notice there's a start delay. The, the instrument is not sampling at this moment. It is simply waiting and counting down. And now the instrument is sampling. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop this. I'm not gonna make you have to watch the whole sample. And you'll notice there was an alarm. So that just means the sample did not complete. And so that alarm is always going to be on the report. And you will be able to view that. We'll go into here and we'll look up the data. And that report should be what we just did. And you can scroll down and see exactly what happened. We sampled 9.863 liters. Uh, the time sampled was eight seconds. It shows the start date, the end date, the flow rate. The flow rate was not the correct flow rate. It did not allow it to get up to the amount. So it was only 73.98. And then we scroll down. Our target volume was 100 liters and we did not get there. We had no intervals. We had a warning and we had an alarm. Now on this alarm, you can see here. So if anything happens during your sampling, the alarms and the warnings will show up. And this is very good for 21 CFR compliance. So you can tell and make sure that your instrument did sample the correct amount of air. So now I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna talk a little bit about users. There are three different users that you can set up in the instrument. We have an administrator, a supervisor, and an operator. The administrator is gonna have full power over everything with the instrument. The supervisor is gonna have limited power. They're gonna be able to set up recipes and set up locations, but they're not gonna be able to change a password. They're not gonna be able to create users. Um, and then you have an operator. An operator can only do basic things, can only choose a recipe that's already been created and start the instrument. So let's go in and look at that. We have the user button. And right now I already have two administrators created, but let's make a new one. Let's make a operator. So you get to choose your username and that could be anything. It has to be a unique name. You cannot repeat the same name. So I'm gonna call this one Heather, just because that's my name. And I'm gonna pick a password. Password could be anything you want it to be. I'm going to pick a three letter password and it's gonna be ABC. And it's gonna make me retype that password. And then I get to assign if I'm an operator, supervisor, and administrator. Because the instrument is already as an administrator, 
That's how I can make this user profile. So I'm gonna give myself operator abilities and I'm gonna add that. So now you see that my name is here and I have a unique username and the instrument right now is unlocked. If I wanted to lock the instrument, I could do that so that only specific people can come in to use them. So you can see the ease of use of this instrument is very easy to use um, and it can be very specific. It could be beneficial to have different recipes for different areas and make sure that you have users sign in. You can always look at those reports and you can always go back and have traceability. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, please visit us at keymeasuring.com and we'll be happy to help you out.